Hey everyone, Dr. Richard Lai here with Study Acupuncture with me. And welcome if it's your first time here, thank you for listening. My name is Richard and I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I'm an acupuncturist. And what I do is I create content for busy acupuncturists and busy acupuncture students just like yourself. Now, another way I help you is through an email list. So if you're on that email list, you get free study guides emailed to you with each theory-based episode. So how do you get on that email list? You go to www.studyaccuwithme.com and you sign up right on the front page. So today's episode is on the illustrious liver. But before we get into it, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsor and then we're going to get right back into it. All right, and we are back. So today we are talking about the illustrious liver and we're talking about all of its functions. Now the liver is really important because it's just one of those organs that just helps us because it makes sure our entire body is operating the way it's supposed to be. The liver makes sure that everything in our body is just doing what it's supposed to be doing. And if there's something going on with your liver, you're gonna know it because things are gonna start malfunctioning. So let's start with function number one, which is that the liver stores blood. Now that function seems really simple. It's only three words, liver stores blood. And so it's like, all right, great. Liver stores blood in itself, nothing else to it, but there's actually more because the liver actually regulates where the blood is in the body and it regulates how much blood goes there. And there's three aspects to this function. The first aspect is connected to your physical activity because the liver is actually gonna regulate how much blood is in itself and how much blood is in your muscles based on your activity level. So when you move, when you exercise, when you go to work, when you walk up and down the stairs, the liver is gonna send blood out to your muscles, it's gonna send blood out to your sinews because that blood is gonna nourish the muscles and the sinews. So that way you have the endurance, you have the capacity to go up and down the stairs. You have the endurance, you have the capacity to walk, to run, to exercise. So if you're out jogging, the liver regulates the volume of blood. So it's gonna regulate the blood going to your quads, your knees, your calf muscles, your butt muscles, your back. All the muscles and sinews that are involved in your jogging, they're gonna get that blood from the liver. And then when you rest, when you recover, that blood is gonna to return to the liver so that the liver can restore your energy. Now, if there's an issue with that function of regulation, that could be a reason why you tire easily or your patient tires easily when they do any sort of physical activity. It could also be a reason why you or your patient get sick easily because liver regulates the amount of blood going out to the muscles and sinews. It means that it nourishes your body and part of that nourishment includes your skin and your muscles. So if there's a decrease in the nourishment to your skin and the muscles, that means your ability to defend against exterior pathogenic factors is also going to be down. Okay, so now the second aspect of the liver regulating blood is that it regulates menstruation. So if the liver function of storing blood is normal, then your patient's menstruation is also going to be normal. But if your patient has liver blood deficiency, then what can happen is that there could be things like scanty menstruation, or there could be no menstruation at all, and that's called amenorrhea. And liver blood can also be affected by things like heat. And in the case of menstruation, if there's heat in the blood, that means your patient's menstruation might even be heavier, or it might come earlier because the heat quickens the blood. And if that's the case, then menstruation can actually come earlier, or it could just be really heavy. Those are heat signs. And the last aspect is about the eyes and the sinews. Now, liver blood actually moistens the eyes and the sinews. Now, there's a saying that the liver opens into the eyes. So the liver has a direct connection with the eyes. So if there's anything wrong with your liver, then it's going to show on the eyes. So for example, in the case of liver blood deficiency, the eyes aren't going to be moistened. So what's your patient going to complain about? They're going to complain about dry eyes. They're going to complain about blurred vision. Now, if your patient has, for example, liver blood heat, then your patient's going to complain about their eyes being red. Their eyes could also be painful because of that blood heat. So that's liver moistens eyes. Now liver also moistens the sinews. So sinews means your tendons. It means your ligaments. It means your cartilage. So if the liver is functioning well, it means that it's moistening all of those things. So that means your patient's pretty healthy. It means that they're not going to have a lot of muscle issues. They're not going to have a lot of joint issues. They're not going to have a lot of cartilage issues. Now if there's an issue with liver blood, then that liver blood isn't going to moisten and nourish those sinews, those ligaments, those cartilages. So that's when your patient's going to complain about cramping. 
And when they bend their knee, they might say, oh, I have cricks and cracks in my knee, my hip, my shoulder. That's why they could also have limitations in range of motion. So in summary, the liver stores blood. And there's three aspects to that storing of blood. Number one, the liver regulates how much blood is out in the muscles and sinews, and it bases it on your activity level. Number two, the liver is going to have a direct effect on your menstruation. And number three, the liver moistens your eyes and it also moistens your sinews. All right, so now the next function of the liver is that it ensures the smooth flow of chi. So what does that mean? So the full sentence is that the liver ensures the smooth flow of chi throughout the body, in all organs, and in all directions. And this function also has three aspects. And the first aspect is that the liver works with all your organs, meaning it oversees, it assists. It just makes sure that for all your organs in your body, their natural chi direction is smooth and is unobstructed. Like for example, your stomach. The chi direction of your stomach is descend, meaning downward. So if you think about when you swallow food, if stomach chi's natural chi direction is downward, that's in line with your function of swallowing food because the food goes down into your stomach. And the stomach also has a function to receive the food. So that's in line with the chi direction. Now, if there's rebellious stomach chi, you're going to have chi direction going in the opposite direction. That chi is going to ascend. It's rebelling. So that's why your patient's going to have burping, nausea, reflux. Maybe they're even going to have vomiting. So the liver's role there is that it makes sure chi flows smoothly all throughout the body, in all the organs, stomach included, and in all directions, all those chi directions. So that's the first aspect of the liver ensuring the smooth flow of chi. And the second aspect has to do with our emotions. Because yes, the liver ensures the smooth flow of chi. And that has an effect on our emotions. Because if the liver isn't happy, that means liver chi isn't flowing smoothly. We're going to have stagnation in the body. And how are we going to feel? We're going to feel irritable. We're going to feel tense. We're going to feel frustrated. And that tension is going to affect us both emotionally and physically. We might have bloating. We might have pain. And we'll just feel all pent up because of that stagnation. And now the last aspect of the liver ensuring the smooth flow of chi has to do with our digestion. And that specifically has to do with our spleen and our stomach. If your liver is flowing smoothly, then all the chi in your body is also going to flow smoothly meaning all the chi in your organs are going to flow smoothly, meaning you're a happy camper. Now, if liver chi is stagnating, that's going to cause organs like the spleen and the stomach to be all messed up as well. Now, from a five elements perspective, we know we have the generating cycle, we have the controlling cycle, and with the controlling cycle, we know that wood controls earth. Now, if there's an excess in wood, like for example with liver chi stagnation, it's actually going to cause the earth element, which the earth element includes your spleen, and your stomach, that's going to be affected. So your patient could have symptoms like burping, diarrhea, reflux, nausea, vomiting. And that's because the liver is overacting or over controlling the spleen and the stomach. And that diagnosis is called wood invading earth. All right, so now let's go over some common sayings that have to do with the liver. So the first one is that the liver manifests in the nails. So every organ has like a saying like this. For example, the heart has a saying, the heart manifests in the complexion. And that just means that we can actually see the health and status of the heart just by assessing someone's facial complexion. So with the liver, the liver manifests in the nails and the nails are nourished by liver blood. So if liver blood is healthy, then our nails are going to be healthy. But if we have things like liver blood deficiency, then our nails are going to be dry. They're going to be cracked and they could even be brittle. Now, the next saying is that the liver opens into the eyes. So the eyes basically directly connect with the liver. And we already know that liver blood nourishes the eyes. It moistens the eyes. So if there's a healthy amount of liver blood, then our eyes are going to be moistened. They're going to be fine. But if there's liver blood deficiency, then the patient's going to say that their eyes are dry, that they have blurry vision. They might even say that they have floaters in their eyes, or they feel like they have grit in their eyes, like there's sand in their eyes. Now, the next saying is that the liver houses the ethereal soul. And so the ethereal soul is the hun. It's the spiritual aspect of the liver. And the ethereal soul influences our ability to basically have a plan in life. It influences our ability to have a sense of direction in life. 
So if there's an issue with our liver, like for example with liver blood deficiency or just liver weakness, then number one, we're not going to feel rooted because our ethereal soul isn't rooted in our liver blood like it's supposed to. Number two, we're not going to have a sense of direction in life because our ethereal soul is responsible for our dreams, our goals, our plans. So if we have liver blood deficiency or liver weakness, we're not going to have that sense of direction. We're not going to have that overall plan. But if our liver blood is healthy, then our hun is going to be anchored strongly in our liver blood. So we're going to have those dreams. We're going to have those goals that we strive for. We're going to feel inspired. So that's all good. The other thing that we need besides a strong liver is that we also need a strong gallbladder because the gallbladder is the one that helps us follow through on all those dreams and all those goals and all those plans. So another saying of the hun is that the hun is the coming and going of the mind. So it's the movement of the mind. It's the coming and going. And that's what helps our mind get those dreams, get those goals. If there's too much coming and going though, or if there's too little coming and going, then there's going to be pathology. So for example, too much coming and going, then we're going to be manic. We're going to be thinking too many things. We're going to be up and down, up and down. And if there's not enough coming and going, then there's depression, right? There's listlessness. There's just overall withdrawal from everything around us. And the last thing I'm going to go over is about anger. And the saying goes like this, the liver is affected by anger. Now, anger causes chi to rise up. And that's why with the liver, when you have a lot of anger, you have liver yang rising. And with anger, it's not just about being angry. Anger can also mean you're frustrated. It can mean you're resenting someone. It could mean that you're just keeping things bottled up. So it's not always expressed anger. It can be that anger, that frustration, that resentment that you've just kept quiet for years and years and years. And that anger causes stagnation and it especially causes chi to rise up. And that can cause manifestations like your headache, like your red face, your red eyes, and your stiff neck. And that actually brings us to the end of this episode. So I hope you got some value out of this episode. And if you did, share this episode with someone so they get that same benefit. And don't forget, go to my website, www.studyaccuwithme.com and sign up for that email list. All right, everyone, until next time, God bless and happy studying.